How your you coach, doing? Um, in all of your coaching career, have you ever gone through a, um, a stretch of games like you're going through right now where they're just so frustrating like yesterday was? Jim, uh, I, I can't remember a season like this in my whole football life. So, uh, no, uh, it, it's been it's been a very strange season. But I know that, um, you know, when, when, when this is happening, then, you know, we can do something about it, you know. And so uh, we still got eight games left. Uh, we're going to regroup and we're going to battle again. But uh, it's been a very strange season. Coach, I know that your players look to you uh, in times of trouble and how you are handling them and how they believe in you. Who do you look to when you go into these difficult times and have these difficult stretches? Well, you know, I have, I have a staff, a coaching staff. I have mentors um, and I have my faith most of all, Jim. And so uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to be fine. I just I felt so bad for those young men yesterday when they thought they won the game and the referees took it from them. Just that look on their face, that was uh, that was the most disappointing thing for me. So, uh, but, but we'll, we'll get through this. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. Sure. Thank you. Oh. Uh, hey, Anthony. Did you just mention that you can't remember a season like this in your entire football life. What, what specifically about this season is just so strange, as you said? Is it, is it losing, like, close games in so many different ways? Like, what specifically do you point well, to? Yeah, exactly. I think we've lost – every way that you can possibly lose if we've done it. So hopefully that's over and now we can get on the winning streak. So do you, do you think of that as just like a chance happening and that you're, you guys are just getting very unlucky to lose these games in that way? Or is there something else that you can pinpoint as to why this is happening? I don't know about that. Uh, I'm not, a, I'm not a big, when it comes to winning and losing, I'm not a big luck guy. I, I believe in execution. So uh, the harder you work, the, the, the better you prepare, uh, you know, the better your chances are. So uh, there's definitely some things that we can do about it. What's your What's your message to your players today? These guys are doing what I asked them to do. You know, uh, they competed for four quarters. You know, they, they went that game, they battled in that game. They went back and forth. They were up, they were down. Uh, they never stopped competing. Uh, I think it's a tough group. And I thought they played for one another. You could just feel that on the sidelines yesterday. So if we keep doing those things. Uh, I believe it will turn. Just looking at the snap counts, Chenna only played six snaps. Was that – was he injured or was that like a matchup thing? Why, no, why did he no, get – No, it so wasn't. The defense only had 51 snaps total yesterday. And uh, Melvin Ingram was playing pretty good ball. You know, I, I thought he had one of his best games. He didn't have any sacks. But I thought he had one of his best games, playing the run and playing the pass. And, uh, you know, sometimes you can get caught up in the snap count. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to get Chenna on the field more. But uh, yesterday, Melvin – Melvin played pretty good. Um, and then with Kenneth Murray, is he still your starting middle linebacker moving forward, or is, is, is has he been benched in for Denzel? No, he got sidelined for a little while. Uh, you know, sometimes with Kenneth, you look at him, you look at his skill set and all that he can do, and then we wonder if we put too much on his plate, you know. Uh, there were just some communication issues yesterday and calling the defense, so we put a veteran guy in to get everybody lined up in the right places, and uh, I thought Denzel came in and did a good job. Did you feel like that was a reason maybe that the, the run defense was struggling earlier in the game and maybe a reason why it improved as it went along was was making that change in middle? Uh, so some of the calls were off a little bit, yeah. But uh, let, let this, letting these guys run around the edge of our defense, we've got to do a better job of setting the edge. You know, Joey's normally in there at the big end. And so uh, we moved Tillery over there. Tillery's been playing inside in the three technique. But we got to do a better job of setting the edge, period. Thanks. Yeah. Anthony, I know he's a young guy, still learning, but are you seeing progress with Trey Pipkins? You know, uh, yeah. You know, you, you take away a couple of plays, and, and Trey played pretty good yesterday, to be honest with you. Um, there was a couple, uh, one hit on the quarterback, and there was one sack. Uh, there was another sack that really wasn't on Trey, but uh, I thought he played pretty good if you take away a couple of plays. And uh, with him, is it just uh, – is it learning technique? Is it just – catching up to the speed of the game still? What what kind of is, is he learned going through right now? Well, he started for us for three weeks straight. And, uh, you know, and then Brian came back. And uh, I think Trey is on the come. You know, uh, I'm not disappointed with Trey at all right now. Uh, but, he, you know, he was a small school kid. He had a lot to learn when he got here. He was very raw. Uh, but his uh, God-given ability is, is really good. Uh, I just wish he would play at a uh, with a little more intensity at times. Okay. Okay. 
Anthony, do you, have you learned anything today regarding Joey's situation? No, uh, his situation has not changed. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Sure. Joe. Continuing the uh, run of injuries, Coach, any update on Balaga and his back? You know, Balaga and his back is uh, very unpredictable because it's a back. So uh, he thought he was well enough to come back and play. He got hit in the back early in the game last week, and he was out. So we'll see. Okay. Justin Jackson? Justin Jackson, I mean, he, he unexpectedly, someone fell into his knee yesterday, and and uh, he put a brace on, came back, and I believe he could have played if we needed him to, but we'll see how he looks in practice this week. Okay. And then it, it, I know it's a week-to-week -week league, but do you kind of – you and Tom kind of see the last eight weeks of the season as a referendum on your guys' program? So we see the last eight weeks of this season as an opportunity to go out and play good football and, and get on a winning streak is how we see it. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Cam. Hey, Coach. Um, Mike Williams. Uh, any word on Mike Williams? He went out last play of the game. Yeah, Mike's, Mike, Mike's doing fine. Okay. Um, Coach, you talked about and you preach a lot about execution, executing the play, and you say the guys are doing what you expect them to do it here in practice. Um, what does it come down to talent then, coach, of them not being able to, the team not being able, is not talented enough to execute the plays and no, get Cam, these wins? No, I would never, I would never say that. You know, it's it's, it's not a talent thing. Uh, we just we just haven't executed down the stretch to win games. We haven't put people away when we had a chance to put people away. But I wouldn't say it's all a, a talent thing. I think we've been up in some games, and uh, and we've shown that we can play with anybody in this league. And we, just, as a as a as a unit, all three units, we just have to figure out a way to uh, finish games and uh, and win some of these close games. And I don't think it's a cultural thing or anything like that. You know, uh, when I first got here, we turned this thing around. We were winning close games, and now we're finding our way losing. I think we have some young players on the field in key situations, and we're going through some of those growing pains for sure but it's not because of the talent. Appreciate your answer, Coach. Thank you. Sure. Emmanuel. Coach, um, how do you feel about the identity of the running back room right now? Because it seems like every week there's a good, different guy kind of stepping up. You know, uh, Kalen stepped up this this uh, yesterday. You know, he's shown that he can do that. He played a little bit in Miami. I've studied him, and it just took him a while to learn our system. And, you know, you'll see more of him. But, you know, we may get Pope back, may not. I don't, I'm not sure. But, uh, with him and uh, and uh, Pope and uh, Justin Jackson, and I mean we, we've got a group of young backs that I believe we can uh, we can build some things around. So uh, I thought he did a good job yesterday. Sure. Do, uh, do, do you think uh, Josh is uh, kind of uh, bounced back from his uh, lapses, like the back 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 fumbles? No, Josh is another guy. He, he, he's getting better every week. Uh, you know, uh, I, I still don't think he's running quite instinctively like he was running earlier, but. I thought he ran hard yesterday. He picked up some tough yards, uh, got a critical first down for us. Uh, yeah, Josh is, I believe he's on the rebound. Sure. And then the last one, um, y'all are still doing those in rounds with the receivers. Um, just like uh, generally as a whole, like how, how do you feel about the, the rushing attack as, as a whole and what you, need, what you need to get better? Who is this? The, the rushing attack as a whole. Well, I think the rushing attack, I believe in the last two or three games, I believe it's, it's, it's gotten better. And so, uh, I mean, a couple of weeks ago, it went for like 200. Yesterday, we rushed for a decent amount. Uh, uh, I don't see the rushing attack as a problem right now. Thank you. Uh, back to Joe. Anthony, did you get an explanation from uh, New York on why the clock kept running on the Mike Williams reception? Was it just his momentum that kept him in bounds? You know, they, yeah, we don't have an explanation yet. We, we put in all of our requests, Joe, and uh, things that we're concerned about. And uh, I get something back in the mail on Thursday and that, that doesn't do a damn thing for us on Thursday, but you know, the game's already been decided. So I don't, it doesn't matter what the explanation is right now, to be honest with you, I moved on to Miami. Okay. And then just looking on to Miami, what have you, in the film that you've seen, since there's going to be a lot of attention to the Justin versus to a matchup this week, what have you thought of to us so far? Well, I mean, we still got a lot more tape left. To, to look at, you know, uh, uh, Tua, Tua had a good game yesterday. Uh, I think he's playing good ball. Uh, they went to him for a reason. Uh, you, you have any connection to Flores? 
nothing than just been friends and you know throughout the league. Other than that, we've never worked together. Okay. So, good coach, though. Okay, thanks. Gilbert. Yeah, Anthony, uh, I think yesterday you mentioned there was too many uh, balls that got, went over the secondary's head. I was watching the film. What, what do you think happened in those two big plays? I think one, one for 45 yards and one for 53. we got to play the ball better, Gilbert. I mean, we're in position, and, and, and the ball's going over our head. So we got to do a better job playing the football. Is there anything you could pinpoint to the secondary? It just doesn't seem like the same secondary of years past. Well, you got different guys back there. You know, you got Nas starting at free safety, Rayshon down at strong safety, you know, because DJ's out. So uh, we had to, had to move some guys around a little bit. But uh, these guys, they've all played good football before. And yesterday was just inexcusable. We cannot let the ball go over our heads like that. And uh, I know it's kind of early in the week, but you think Chris Harris Jr. could play this potentially on Sunday? You know, if, if he could, that would be great. But as of right now, I wouldn't count on it. Thank you, Anthony. Yep. Uh, back to Emmanuel. Sorry, I forgot to ask earlier, uh, but uh, how's uh, Eckler doing? And uh, what would you hope to get him back? Eckler's doing good. You know, he's, 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 he's on schedule rehab-wise. And, uh, you know, when he's healthy, he'll be back. But I'm not going to put a timetable on it. Good. Thank you. Cam. Hey, Coach, you, you, and looking at to Miami, I just want to ask you a question. I know you were kind of um, forced into making your quarterback change probably sooner than you wanted to. Um, they made a quarterback change. Just as a coach, from a culture standpoint, when you make the change in midseason like that, obviously there was a reason he wanted to make that change. But how do you see it as addressing the team? How do you see it? How do I see them making a quarterback change? Looks like we just lost Cam on that one. So uh, let's go. Let's just have to move on. Go. Let's go to Pop. Anthony, you know, you, you mentioned that the young players just not making plays in, in crucial moments. When you're looking at sort of all these plays over the course of these eight games, what do you, what do you sort of assess as the reason why your young players across the board aren't stepping up? Is it just the fact that they didn't get enough time on the field during the offseason and, and the limited time? What, what's sort of your assessment? No, I, no and, and I never say young players are not making plays in crucial ga- you know, in crucial times in the game. I'm saying that we're going to have to go through some of their growing pains at, at certain times in the game. And that's, I think that's normal for most rookies around this league. You know, I think not having an offseason is not helping those guys, but – uh, no, we, we have to overcome that as, as a unit. We have to overcome those things. And then just m- mentioning that, you know, it, it's not a cultural issue. Why do you feel that way? Because I've seen this team win close games before, you know. Uh, uh, that's all I heard before I got here was we lost close games a lot. And then when we got here, we, you know, I think we kind of flipped the script the first couple of years. And then last year we lost some close games. And this year, you know, here we are again. We've lost a ton of close games. So. Uh, I believe it's more of an execution issue than a cultural issue.